It's okay to worship him. It's okay to praise him on today. Because he is our God. Amen. 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 Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Amen. Okay, I can get a little loud. All right. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I come before you broken. Lord, I ask you to decrease me and increase your Holy Spirit in me on today, Father God. Lord, we honor you and we bless your holy name. You have been so good to us. Even if we had a thousand tongues, we cannot praise and honor you enough. So, Lord, hear our cry. Do not turn your ear away. And let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, my Lord and my Redeemer. Amen. 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 All right. Amen. Well, it's an honor to be able to stand across this pulpit. As you can see, I'm a little nervous, but... The Holy Spirit has me. How many of you know about that? How many of you know about that? See, like the word of God said, that there is joy in Him. There's going to be no more pain and no more suffering. Amen. First of all, I would like to thank everyone on behalf of my family for your presence today in honoring my grandfather. Now, let me set the record straight. For any of you that may not know, I have yet to arrive. I am broken. Do not let this clergy fool you. Because you have to be able to be broken to be able to stand before his presence and to be able to stand in the holies of holies. So I'm going to go on and fix it because this is my family and everybody know all my deep dark secrets. <laughs> so, so why are you thinking, oh, that's just Doug. <laughs> <laughs> yes, don't call my nickname out. Uh, I'm a broken vessel for the Lord, and He's still using me. Just a little background about my grandfather. As I was preparing for this message today, I had a lot of mixed emotions, a lot of anxiety. And anyone that know me, I'm like, ah, I gotta. My brain goes really to the left, and I gotta make sure it's just perfect. But God has it. But then I started to think about my childhood and the time I spent with my granddad and all the crazy memories with this crazy family. <laughs> started to flood back through my head. And I said, okay. For those that don't know my grandfather, he was not a man of a lot of words. Unlike his granddaughter standing here today, I tend to have the gift of gab. So if I go over just a little bit, somebody do like this. You know the church folks. Bring it, yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> The only way that you can get my grandfather to talk is to either talk about his favorite team, who were the Atlanta Braves, wrestling, or do something to my grandmother. <laughs> and we all knew that if you did something to my grandmother, you're going to pay for it. Or jump on him like my brother did in and my cousin Jamal out there. He's probably still feeling that butt whooping. <laughs> I am the seventh of 10 grandchildren, and we all had nicknames. I just said mine. If you was listening, I will not repeat it again. And I will not call out anybody else's nickname. I will get a mic after the service. So I would like to leave out of here. Don't mention mine. As you can hear. So. My granddaddy, he, he knew everyone's name, but he would never call you by your name. So you just accepted whatever he gave you. <laughs> and he grew up with it. <laughs> he was not a man of many words, but his presence resonated throughout this family. Growing up, I could not understand my granddad, but now as an adult and as a woman of God, I now understand what I was watching. I was watching a natural born leader. I was in the presence of a protector, a provider, a family man, and most of all, he was the patriarch of this family. Amen? Amen. So as I begin this, I like to walk around, so I hope I don't trip because I'm clumsy and I have on heels. This is, I'm not going to give you a speech. I'm going to preach. 
And I'm going to do exactly what it is that the Lord has commanded me to do. So all the formalities are out of the way. Everybody's good? Yes. Amen. 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 I'll not be here. I will not be up here long. But I have to do what the Lord says. And I have to be obedient. He said, obey me and leave the consequences to him. If I could leave you with a thought today, that would be God is about to release his glory upon your life today. Amen. See, if I have an amen corner, I'll finish it up real quick. So you got you to finish up quick. I'm, 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 I'm think that you don't understand what I'm saying, so I'm going to have to repeat myself. God is about to release his glory upon your life today. Amen. 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 Gotcha. My grandfather has ran the race, and he has completed his assignment. So as we eulogize him, and we think about all the memories that we've spent with him. He has already transitioned. Now it's our turn. It's for those of us that are left to run the race. Amen. 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 Do you know that the enemy job is to keep you in darkness? Your true identity. But I come today to set the record straight. Somebody has lied on my Christ. So I come to set the record straight about Jesus Christ and the enemy. The glory of God will be revealed today in your life. So I know everyone knows that I'm in seminary, so I guess I need to give you a title. And my message will be coming from Romans 8, verse 1. If you have your Bibles, you can turn there. Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit, for the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. It has set me free. Has it set you free today? Do you know? Look at somebody and say, God is about to reveal your work today. I need y'all to say that again. You got to believe it in your spirit. God is about to reveal your work today. See, God already revealed his work to my grandfather. See, he already knew what he was called to do. If you have listened closely to my family and who he was as a man of God. Now, he never came out and said, I'm a man of God. But his actions show me that when I look in the scriptures, this is what a born leader, a patriarch, a man of God looks like. Oh, yeah. wow. Amen. 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 All right. So somebody has lied to you today because you are part of a covenant that God has made with this man. And the blood of this man runs through all of our veins. And I meant that all of our veins. Because he has adopted us all into his family. Amen. 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 Somebody has lied to you today about who you are and who you are part of. But I've come to set the record straight today. You are part of greatness. Amen. Satan the adversary is the accuser of people. He competes with God. He goes against the truth just like the father he is a spirit, and he's looking and roaming the earth to see whom he may devour, who he may cause friction with, family against family, sister against sister, brother against brother, mother against daughter. That is his job. See, I have to set the record straight on who the enemy is. See, sometimes we think it's our mind that got us thinking like that. But let me tell you, you have an adversary that is standing waiting for you to hate your family, to hate those that love you. See, I don't get an amen, amen. on that, but that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. I understand. I get it. Because it doesn't feel good. I never told you that this message was going to feel good. But I have to do what thus says the Lord. He uses the ones that does not know his power. 
or know the power that God is giving you? Do you know you have power on today? Do you know you can speak things in the atmosphere and it can happen when life and death is, is in the power of the tongue? You can speak life or you can speak death. Which one? Choose thee this day. What are you going to do? Are you going to live or are you going to die? And what I mean by that, are you going to let your spirit die? Or are you going to allow your spirit to live in Christ? Will you allow to, God to be the joy and the center of your life today? Amen. Can I get an amen so y'all get quiet on me? So maybe I'm thinking maybe the spirit's resonating your spirit on today. But as I was here to, yesterday, and I was looking at my grandfather, and I'm all off, but I, that's, all right. that's right. I do what the Lord says. But I, was, I spent some time with him. And I said, Granddaddy, what would you have me to say? Now, I've already asked the Lord, and I said, what is it that you want me to say? If I had to be your mouthpiece, what do you want your family to hear? And he said, the joy of the Lord is your strength. And that we cannot do this without each other. You cannot do this alone. You cannot walk this journey alone. So you got to understand the way that God set up his family. God set it up that you would need each other. He set up the children of Israel that they may be mighty in the land. And see, they were small. You got to understand the children of Israel, they were a small group of people and they were disobedient. He called them stiff neck. He called them everything in the book because they just wouldn't get right. Um, I'm talking to somebody on today. So if I am, just push your feet on there and say, ouch. Because I know that I have been there. And he's speaking to me on today. All right, ouch. <laughs> I'm having a little, a little ouch there. <laughs> you are part of a family. You are a royal priesthood. Know your identity. Know the family that God has connected you with. They're not your enemy. See, that is the trick of the enemy to make you believe that those that love you don't have the best interest for you. We may not always understand each other, Amen. but it does not mean we don't love each other. As my sister said, we're a group of nuts. And I'm probably the biggest one with the clergy collar on. <laughs> Amen. Amen. There is a promise for you. There is a promise for you. Just as it was a promise for my grandfather. One of the things that, as I was spending time with him, one thing that I learned, that he was not a man of many words, but his actions showed this family what it's like to walk according to the will and service of God. He was humble. He only spoke when it was necessary. See, me, I tend to speak out of turn and say things that I have to go back and say, oh, I should have said that. How many know about that? Yeah. But one thing that I love about my grandfather that I didn't appreciate it as a young child was that he didn't do anything that rational, out of irrational. He wasn't irrational. Everything he thought about. At least that's what I saw. God knows that you have been healed, but he wants you to see the sickness and the pain and the suffering that we are feeling right now. That's the job of the enemy, and it's okay to grieve. It's okay to go through the process, but God is saying, don't stay there. Don't stay there. There is a work for you to do. But I declare right now that my true and your true identity and the people of God and this family will be revealed today. I declare right now in the name of Jesus that we are victorious. I declare right now that God will reveal in this hour that he will reveal who you are. In this time, see, let me stop right here. It takes going through to understand who you are. Mm -hmm. 
If you look at everyone in this Bible, every biblical character in this Bible, they had some mess with them. When you get a chance, pick up your word and see, because you're not the only one. There has been suffering. He said, I gave my only son that you might live. That you might be called into the family of God. You, you, and you. But see, there is a process to this. See, the only way that you can say I'm a part of this family is to accept him. And to believe that he is who he said he is. Somebody has lied to you. You are part of a chosen priesthood. Go and find who you are. Study to show yourself approved. A worker that need not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. You are called for more than where you're at. Amen. 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 Do you know that a change is getting ready to come to this family? Do you know that? Do you believe it? See, you have to know it and then believe it in your heart that change can take place in your life. See, my grandfather's time was already set for him. See, we don't know our time. See, God could have took him 20 years ago when he had a stroke, but God decided no. So he waited to, for him to see me and my other, you know, all his grandchildren grow up and his great-grandchildren See, you look at that bed and you look at it and say, well, my dad or my granddad or my great granddad or my uncle or wh whoever he was to you was laying back and he was no longer the strong man that we knew. But let me tell you something. Somebody has lied to you on today. Let me tell you something. The enemy has lied to you. Strength is not that you can pick up something or you can walk with two feet. There are some weak English that are walking on two feet right now. And my granddaddy was stronger on his back. Because he decided before the stroke that I'm going to serve the Lord. And what God did was use that to prepare him for those 20 years. I cannot imagine, as I was thinking and preparing for this, I cannot imagine being on my back for 20 years, not being able to drive, not being able to do anything anymore. Or at least that's what I was thinking. Like, I'm so used to going. Right. And to, if you knew my grandfather, you would know that he was always moving. He was always, I mean, he was the same size as my uncle, if not bigger. So can you imagine living like that? And there's something like a sickness to take you and knock you off of your feet. It's hard. We never really thought about it like that. It was, we got to go see granddaddy or daddy in the nursing home. But have you ever stopped to think that God was using him to do something to this family? He was using the patriarch. He knocked the patriarch off his feet to do something with us. Somebody has lied to you. Somebody has told you a story that somebody is the adversary and is Satan. He has lied to you on today. You are much more than what you think. Amen. Amen. I think I got off. Sorry. But I just come by to tell you that God is good. He is good. And this is not, I guess, your typical eulogy, but this is my grandfather. So I figured that since God has chosen me to be the mouthpiece, I guess I can be the mouthpiece for my grandfather. And if he can look at us right now, what would he say? Search your heart today. Is he pleased with you? Is he pleased? Is God pleased with you? As I continue to read in passages, verse 18 in Romans. For I consider that the suffering of this present time, I consider 
the suffering of this present time is not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us, in you. This is what God is saying to you today. The suffering, the pain, the sorrow that you are feeling on today, the things that nobody knows that you're going through, all the tears, all the heartache, all the anger, all the broken heart, all the promises that people have made, family that has broken promises, strife, envy, hatred that has come, all of that, all of that suffering that you are going through right now, there's no comparison to the glory that shall be revealed in us. Amen. 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 I just come by to tell you that the Spirit helps us in our weakness, in our time of need. We may not know what to pray right now because the pain is so deep. But God said that the Spirit will intercede for us with sighs too deep for words. When I think about how little my grandfather said, it makes me wonder if he already had it figured out, allowing the Spirit to intercede on behalf of his family, on behalf of you. The book of James says, verse 1 and 19, but everyone must be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. Be careful what you release in the atmosphere. And if any lesson or any takeaway that I can or remember of my grandfather right now, it would be that. Be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. Guard my words. Because what I release in the atmosphere, there's life and death in the power of the tongue. And those that love it will eat its fruit. And even though we are weak right now in this moment of sadness, we have to speak life in this dark place. The book of Joel 3 and 19 says, let the weak say that I am strong. Amen. See, I could look at, or you could look at what the last year of my grandfather's life and say he was weak. Or when I had to go to the nursing home and hold his arm up. Because I could, I could have looked at that and said, oh, he is weak. He is feeble. But his spirit wasn't. And even in the last moment of his life, see, see let, me, let me stop right here. Let me tell you. Because maybe you don't understand right now. In his last moment, while we were up there praying for him, the last night that we saw him before he passed, we played. Take me to the king. And all I saw, or all my sister and my cousin saw, was his hand go up like this. He said, let the weak say that I am strong. Amen. So whatever it is that you're going through today, whatever it is that you're feeling right now, speak life. Speak life. Because you can make it. You can make it. Stay faithful. Love each other. The devil cannot curse what God is blessed. Again, the devil cannot curse what God has blessed. Love one another according to the word of God. He will raise up an army of men, women, children, that will continue to be my grandfather's hands, his feet, his mouthpiece. And we will carry the banner of God's truth on our shoulders. The legacy of my grandfather has become now our work. God is about to reveal his work in you and through you. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. If you love him, you will keep his commandments. Peace. Jesus will leave with you today. His peace that he gives, not as the world gives it, that he gives it. I say to you, let not your heart be troubled. Neither let them be afraid. For Jesus has sent us a comforter 
no more sorrow, no more pain, because my granddad has seen the glory of the Father that will be revealed in us one day. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you again.